Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here, and welcome to another Guitar Teacher Reacts. If you're new to the channel, uh, this is just as if you were to bring a uh, ice cold track to your guitar teacher, and we listen, and we give you the key takeaways, what to focus on, what to work on. So, Morgan Wallen has been requested hundreds of times. I'm on my YouTube comments here, and I just searched Morgan Wallen. Hundreds, right? Most of them are for Isbell's Cover Me Up. Now, if there's a lot of this being posted on Jason's video, you know that's tremendous. So we might have to do that one, but we're gonna start with a request from Too Tall Paul 428 it says, Talk in Tennessee. Uh, thanks for being a subscriber, Too Tall Paul. I got it pulled up here. Let's do it. <laughs> Dig the two guitar thing. You say them city boys living in those high yeah. rise condos only left you feeling low. Those little smoke glass fancy cars sure go fast, but never got you where you wanted to go. All I've ever owned is an old C Chevy truck cuddled up Get you falling in love on a bench seat Don't mind me I'm just talking Tennessee Girl, don't blame me if I slip and call you baby That's just my way of letting the lady know she's working on me Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Yes, I'll start and stop. A lot of cool devices going on here. So many things in here, uh, which could be a lesson on their own. But this is why I love country music. And this is a straight ahead tune. It's three minutes, 49 seconds. We've already gotten relative majors and minors. Uh, we got that descending thing. Uh, we've got inversions going on. We've got, it's, there's just so much to talk about. Um, <laughs> You know what? It's just a damn good country song. Like the vibe, there's like surprises in every five seconds. That's really how you hook people. This, these are little tiny hooks, and I'm going to show you each one. Let's just jump in. So from the beginning, you got two guitar parts. Now I'm going to start with just focusing on one guitar. There's a low part, and then there's like a harmonized high part. <laughs> So good. But. So we're in F sharp. I'm assuming the guitar is tuned down, um, and they're getting that uh, kind of open vibe there, right? But it's basically F sharp over to your uh, other F sharp, an octave up. Now you could do this, you know. If, if you're in open position, you got to tune down. I'm not going to do that, but note the sound is F sharp. And then that little thing you hear, that is five, six, flat seven. So root, 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 root. Five, five hammer on six, flat seven. Again, I'm talking intervals, not frets. On this channel, on my website, we talk about intervals and functions. We talk, don't talk about fret numbers, okay? Uh, so here we go. You say them city boys living in those high-rise condos. See, that's what I'm talking about. 19 seconds in, you are, you are at a hook right away. You got that riff, you think you're settled in, and immediately you're captured. Pro writing here, pro writing. Now let's get the other guitar part. Now, I'm going to assume, I'm not picking this out of the air, I'm going to assume that we're in the key of F sharp minor. Um, because it sounds minor, we're in F sharp, so I'm gonna start there. So I'm gonna start by, I hear dyads, right? Pieces of chords. I'm gonna start by you know, trying to figure out from that key, if all those notes fit, okay? This is educated guessing with basic music theory. And we get to watch the video. 
So, again, I can't tell if he's detuned or not, but if we start F sharp minor, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing this little dyad, root and minor third. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Something like that. Okay. So again, I'm just taking guesses here and watching the video. Right? And then... So what this is here is this is your... Basically, this is your root and minor third of F sharp. This is your root and major third of E. Right? So I'm just going from my sixth chord to my one chord. Because remember, F sharp is the same as A major. So I'm thinking relative majors and minors. So this is... And then it just goes over to the root and fifth of again E and F sharp. So again, root and root and minor third to root and major third to your inverted root and fifth of E, root and fifth of F sharp. And then it just goes down to, to your third and fifth of F sharp here, right? A and C sharp respectively, back up. Sorry, back up to your root and fifth of E, and then back down. So again, it's just basic music theory, nothing outside. We are straight on the rails, right? This is straight ahead. This is a minor country riff with the other guitar. Super complimentary. And so you think you're settled in, and then immediately, immediately, the 13 seconds in, you get switched on you. You say them city boys living in those high-rise condos Only left you feeling low Those lips Only left you feeling low Okay, so one of them might be in open position doing that little, like a, uh, you know, like a, if it's an E, that, but, but you're in F sharp, you're doing a little minor four, flat five, five, minor third, kind of trill, right, in there. But what this descending part is, is this just root, and then go down chromatically, root and major seven, root and flat seven, root and, major sixth. What happens here? What we're really doing is this descending note is all just is all just a little decoy, right? It's a little it's a little ploy to get you here, okay? Because that note implies a four chord. It implies a subdominant kind of motion. We're going away. So this is all just a disguised way to get to a four chord. Now, I understand that this would be B7, right? Not B minor in key. But that little pool allows him to sing super bluesy over the top when he gets down there. You say them city boys living in those high-rise condos. So his, his melody, again, you guys know this, learn the melody, the vocal melody, what the dude is singing to every song that you learn, okay? So coming in, root and fifth. I, I can't sing it and play it, but you're, this is minor pentatonic with that kind of flat five in there to get that bluesiness over. Right. On the left, you feeling low. Those little smoke glass, fancy cars sure go fast. I love that lift. I never got you where you wanted to go. All I've ever got you where you wanted to go. Okay, so now, so we keep going down. Uh, uh, uh. 
Uh. Yes, got it. I never got you where you wanted to go. All I've ever owned is notes. All right, so what did I do here? I tracked the root note going down. So you got this. Remember, that's implying a major four chord, but then it goes down one half step and it shows us really where we're going, okay? D with an F sharp minor triad on top, which is what? D major seven. So this was like a tease, this was a tease to eventually get to here, which is the four of, wait for it, our relative major. This is a classic songwriting technique where you might have the verse in the relative minor, F sharp, and the chorus brighten up to its relative major. For those of you music theory beginners, the key of F sharp and the key of A major contain the same exact notes. The focus is just the resolution point is a sad F sharpness or a bright, happy A major, right? A, you know. Same notes are in the same thing. That's relative major and minor. So again, minor verse, if you will, with that descending thing that hints at the four, but when it actually gets there, it is the four of our relative major, A major. So I'm, now I'm, what I'm gonna assume here is that all the rest of the pieces come from A major in this chorus part. There's your A major, right, or A. Major seven. Oh, see, Chevy truck, cut it up, get you falling in love on a bench. See, don't mind me. I'm just. And there it is. There's your, again, classic. I love the voice leading that you get in straight ahead country choruses. I need to do another song, a hit song formula on country choruses. Because do you know how many go one, five first inversion? E over G sharp, six. So again, this is A major. This is E over G sharp, so E first inversion. First inversion means the third is in the bass. Going down to F sharp, but now F sharp minor triad. Again, classic country songwriting chorus device. Just talking Tennessee. A7, all right, so now we're borrowing, we're making this functioning, and you're wondering, hey, how am I doing this so fast? I I'm watching the guitar player on the right, uh, and again, educated, educated guessing. So you hear that sound of that G in there? That makes it, that makes it functioning, right? So that's A7, where does A7 want to go? Where does five want to go? To one, a functioning dominant chord, if it's functioning, should resolve to D. Girl. And look at that, a D. Girl, don't blame me if I it sounds like they're maybe letting the E ring out, doing a D sus too. The point is that was a functioning dominant. And call you baby. Walk down from the D, so D. A over C sharp, so A, first inversion. So same device you did here, A to E first inversion, one to its five. Same thing you're doing here, D to A first inversion, its five. If you had a bass player, you bet your sweet ass you'd be grabbing every one of these. It, that's just my will. Right? A little B minor seven action there. Again, just D major with B on the bottom. She's working on e me. There I go. Am I? South side show. Whiskey whisper nose. This sweet nothing. Southern isms. Jack and seven sipping. Hoping that you're digging on. Hey, talking Tennessee. The street lights 
that's only ever let you see the skyline. Yes. It's been a long time. Yes. Since the Milky Way, Jupiter and Venus took your breath away. You're like you're taking mine. I love this guy. What a great phrasing. Love the other guitar player, too. You can see him back there. He's kind of like rubbing his nose, like kind of thinking about, oh, how, you know, what breed of F sharp are going to add color? I'm just going to go up. And then maybe next time I'm just going to, right? Maybe I'm down here. Maybe, I, you know, he's, 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 he's unsure what he's going to do. I love it. I'm unsure what I'm going to do. We grab some tailgate on and then he snags the, the harmony. Catch a few fireflies and a moonshine jar. Don't mind me. I'm just talking. Yes. Tennessee. Girl, don't blame me if I slip and call you baby. That's just my way of letting the lady know she's working on me. There I go. Three parts, let baby. My yeah. Southside Shore, whiskey whispering nose. This sweet nothing southern is I'm jacking seven sipping open that you're digging on me talking Tennessee talking Tennessee okay so real quick again the other the one guitar player is just an open E the other one has capo second fret so when he plays the uh you know, E major or the D major shape, it gets the sound of E major, right? This. And so if you notice the two guitar players, whenever one is doing the open down here, the other one has got this one up here. They're always in a different spot. Extremely important. God, there's so many great things to point out in this video. See? I dig that one. I hope he snags it and double tags it. Goes back up. Well, you do each his own. There I go in my south side show whiskey whisper no. Little sweet nothing southernism, jacking seven sipping, hoping that you're digging on me. Talking Tennessee. Talking Tennessee. and then the a big F sharp minor. All right, first things first. I know I'm a guitar teacher, I'm a guitar player, and that's kind of the focus of this channel, but Morgan Wallen is a great singer. His inflection and control, and most importantly, sense of rhythm and timing over these two guitars without percussion, without a click, impeccable, impeccable, impeccable delivery. The second he starts singing and that guitar part starts descending, I mean, it has freaking gotcha. And there's no bass player, there's no drums, there's no rhythm section. That, that, that is that thing that I, I most attribute to like Miles Davis. And a lot of you are gonna be like, well, how are you gonna connect these two? Where it's like, you have the foundation and the foundation is whatever the foundation is. But it's this thing that's up here. It's the single note that non-musicians can sing and hum in their head. It's the single note at a time, which makes everything below it connect and make sense, right? It's the melody, but it's the rhythm in the melody too that makes it all pop. As soon as he starts singing and that guitar starts descending, you, it's a hook, it's a hit. I guarantee you when they played this to their producers or agents or whatever the first time, they got to 13 seconds, they said, sold, sold. So pay attention to these little things. Okay, so he's great. Now, as far as the actual structure of the song, so many things. I want you to, this is what I love about country music. This is why I fell in love with country music, because there's so many basic but potent things 
that you can take away from these songs. If you're like me and you're on the hunt for what makes a hit a hit, what makes an earworm an earworm, what, why something sounds good to non-musicians, you know, that's like my whole thing. Um, country music is, country music is where to spend the time and start. Because you get so many basic things that you can use with basic music theory and you can use them all over the place. Start in your relative minor, F sharp. Two counterpunctual lines. Right? So, F sharp minor, right? Now I know, I know a lot of you are gonna say, oh no, that's a major six, not a flat six. Right? But then, it has this descending thing. Right? Which gives you, to, it, 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 it's preparing you for this land of B7, which would then go to land of E7, which would go to A7, it would move you around, right? But forget all that, forget all that. You imply that four, right? But then it goes back up, it does it. And then when it finally gets down, it gets to the four of your relative major and throws the triad you started with on top, the F sharp over D to make it D major seven. Totally brightens it up. It's a total floaty sound now. Then goes over to A. We're finally in our tonic key center. And then it descends. It's five chord, but with your first inversion, your G sharp, the third of that chord in the bass. And you know if you have a band, the bass is getting that damn thing. Down to D. Now, secondary dominant. Going over to A7 here, which is gonna be functioning to D. When it gets to D, and then does that same device, D, A over C sharp, and again, you know the bass is grabbing that, B minor seven, which is just, again, same functioning. You got the D major triad with a B in the bass, and it goes round and round and round. And all the little parts, all the lead parts, all his vocal parts, come from like a bluesy F sharp minor kind of thing. So, I could talk forever on that, all I would like to say is that for those of you that are on the fence about country, because you think it might be cheesy, especially a lot of new country is, this does not fall into that category. This guy's a stone cold singer, right? But when you have these type of solid, solid songwriting devices at your disposal and you use them in a proper and interesting way that has surprises like every 10 seconds in here, then that gives you the ability to sing on top of it and you don't have to do something crazy. You don't have to set, you know, make some crazy ambitious picture. You can talk to non-musicians and just say what you're trying to say. You can just be talking Tennessee. You can just, you can just say it, right? And that's what gives country a bad rap. But if you dig into it, especially if you dig into the players behind these scenes, the best of the bad. That's why we should all live in Nashville. That's it. Love you all so much. And uh, yeah, I want to see this guy do cover me up. Might, might have to be the next video. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, Too Tall Paul, thanks for being a subscriber. And thanks to all of you out there that have taken the extra step and joined me and so many others at guitargate.com. That's where all my actual lessons and courses, my whole curriculum uh, is housed on my website. If you can tell the vibe here is a little different, it's because it is. Um, and I'd love to have you over there. It's, it's, um, so it makes all this possible. If you're interested, it's the first link in the description. That's my little pitch. I hate doing little pitches, um, but I love you all. See you soon.